Timothy. Well, good morning, Ed here from Crystal Clear Aquatics. Today starts the beginning of another pond project and the idea is I shall be transforming this into this. Now some of you may recognise this excavation. Dave and I were working on a pond project for the summer months on a pond behind me. Uh, and here at the bottom of the garden was an excavation which was once a pond, which we shall be restoring back to its former glory, turning this one into a very natural wildlife pond. Let's do a quick recap. If you didn't recognise that excavation, then if you watch the video, you'll recognise this. Now this pond's had six weeks, a little bit longer, to settle down and establish. And in that time, the water lilies particularly have really come on in leaps and bounds. Water clarity is not quite there yet. It had improved drastically. Um, we've not done any maintenance on the filtration yet, just letting it settle down and establish. So the quality has dipped a little bit. So we'll give the filter a good clean, put in some blanket weed treatments as there's just beginnings of a little bit of fibrous blanket weed here. And over the next couple of weeks, that will really transform the pond, polishing the water and making it look a little bit clearer. Nice to come back and see how this is doing though. To jump back in here and get wet feet. So the idea of this job is going to be reducing this hole down a little bit. It's far, far too big and far too deep for a nice natural pond, a wildlife pond. It's the shallows in wildlife ponds which tend to be most productive. It's where the amphibians are going to be visiting and spawning and where the marginal plants are going to be growing. And it's the planting which is going to be key for a natural wildlife pond like this. Now where a lot of my pond designs, the edging is very obvious, in this particular pond I want to try to make the edging as seamless as possible with a natural kind of transition through to the borders and the ground behind it. If you remember, if you watched the video of the other pond build, we tapped into a water supply which was feeding water um, up to the top pond over there causing problems with water getting beneath the pond liner. So we diverted that and we brought that down to here and that's going to be running off and constantly topping up and feeding this natural pond which will then flow off and run off elsewhere. Through the summer months it's continued to dribble and flow so it shows that there's a, a pretty good supply of water to here so that'll help to keep this pond topped up. But in the meantime we've got to stop this from keeping this ground very wet and squidgy which it currently is. So I'm going to set up a little temporary um, bypass pump so that I can discharge this away and stop this emptying out into here making all this wet and muddy. So all of this squidgy silt and alluvium is going to have to be removed before we can start to do any real building on this pond. There's probably a few inches of sediment and muck over here, but it gets a lot deeper over here. And all of this loose stuff will come out so we can get down to a firm base. There's a lot of building material and rocks and stones and bits and pieces left over from the other build. That's going to come in here, helping to provide a nice firm base for the rest of this job and also helping to um, make the pond a little bit shallower. Now, getting soaking wet feet doing this. I don't want to incorporate this entire crater as the pond. It's far, far too big and it's quite a boring shape. And we want to try and make sure that there's plenty of space and borders around the pond for access for maintenance and very key to be able to plant up around the pond. That's going to be really important. So the idea is that using some block work, I'm going to build up the internal structure of the pond, which is going to create the framework that the pond liner can then go over the top. Um, behind the block work, a lot of this is going to then have to get backfilled. There's going to be a lot of soil brought into this job so that we can then reclaim a lot of this land back. Um, but it's very important that you don't just build up directly onto soft material. We need to have a decent firm foundation and a pretty solid structure for that liner to go over before we can then start to build up on. So temporarily, I'm gonna swap over this tank with a slightly larger container so that we can pour water into that and I can set up my automatic uh, pump with a float switch that will turn itself on and off to empty this out. But in the meantime, if you remember watching the previous video and if you didn't watch it, there's some compost bins up here behind me which were riddled with very large female grass snakes ready to lay eggs during the summer months. And Mark had told me that he's since had lots and lots of babies. I haven't found any, but now emptying this container out, inside it, 
I've got a beautiful little baby grass snake. Let's see if you can see that on the camera. Gorgeous little things, absolutely stunning. Hopefully it's not gonna, gonna be able to scent on me like the adults do, it's probably too young for that. But what a gorgeous, perfect, miniature snake. Lovely, very pleased to see that. I'll go and pop this one very carefully back in the compost bins. Beautiful, a nice find for the first day. Well, that was a good day's work yesterday. All of the wet, sloppy stuff dug up and taken out. And now we're down to a decent, firm layer that we can start to build up on. Got Mr. David back again. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Got to keep all his fans happy. Yeah, it's starting to look like a big hole already. So the next stage of this job is going to be to start ferrying a lot of the rock and the rubble that we'd collected from doing the original pond behind Dave over here. And that's going to start to build up the base of this pond to provide a bit more of a firm foundation to build up on. Um, it's also a good way of just getting rid of a load of rubble and crap which we dug up from the original build. But I've got to be careful because in the base of this pond we're also going to put a length of leaky pipe a way of collecting potential groundwater that might get collected beneath the pond liner and giving it away to discharge safely away from the pond so there's no risk of liner lift. And I want to make sure that this package, which is going to be a small trench lined with a permeable membrane, a little bit of gravel, some leaky pipe, a bit more gravel on top and then kind of fold it up with this membrane. The top of that package needs to be at the finished level of the stonework. It can't be buried beneath a stone. It doesn't want to be proud above it because then it will be visible with the pond liner. And I'm not quite sure yet how much rubble we've got and how much of an impression that's going to make on this base. So initially, we'll probably pile up the rubble other sides, get an idea of the depth of the stonework, and then I can decide if I need to start trenching in the pipe or if I can just lay it between the two sections of rubble. That pipe work is then going to get trenched all the way through below what will be maximum water level to the other side of the fence here where the overflow for the pond is going to go as well. So there's going to be quite a lot of digging and the trenching is going to have to go down initially as deep as the base of the pond. It can slope up a little bit but it still needs to be at least two feet, maybe three feet in depth. So that's going to be quite a lot of digging to get all the way through here the other side of the fence. That's something that will probably start today and then once that's done I can start to think about the shape of the depth of the pond, the deeper section, which is going to be outlined with the block work. It's another hot day today. Um, today 30 degrees, yesterday 29, tomorrow 31. I'm not going to complain as we've not had very much sun for the summer, but it is hot work for digging. So Mark and Dave collectively have been doing a good job of getting some of these stones in the pond. It's hot work today though. Dave's having a well-earned break on this very convenient wall that somebody built. <laughs> nice on your bum, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. I put some blanket answer treatment in here yesterday, so the pond's looking very cloudy. Blanket weed's starting to form around the edges. So this is its first dose of this pond. Look at all the lily flowers though. And the dragonflies are back in the sunshine. I've been busy trenching. Back to digging. So I pretty much can finished off the section inside the fenced area. 
And now I'm going to go out into the park the other side of this fence and carry on digging about another five or six feet so that we can get the outlet of a length of leaky pipe terminating at the end at what will be about the level of the base of this pond. Now obviously it goes without saying if you're working outside beyond your boundaries of the garden, here for example in the park, it's always worth getting some permission first from the landowner. So here uh, the owners have contacted the local park keepers to make sure that they were happy with what we were doing and everything is fine and above board. So here I am the other side of the fence and I very, very nearly just trodden a grass snake. They're everywhere around here. Lovely having this as your back, back garden. So this is where I'm going to be digging. That's about where the other side of the trench is. And I'm just going to bring it down so that that pipe terminates down here at that low spot so that we've got an area for the water to discharge. And then naturally, just down at the base of this little ditch over here, there's a natural stream and runoff. This whole park is filled with little springs and, and runoffs. So the water will end up disappearing down there. This is hot, hot work. The only benefit to sweating this profusely is that I don't need to go to the toilet. To top it off, there's a bloody motorbike tyre at the bottom of this trench that I'm digging up at the moment. One of the worst things that I could possibly try and dig up. Every time I, I hit it, I'm bouncing off the rubber. Oh well. <laughs> So the trench through to the other side of the fence for the drainage has been finished off. Hello. Uh, Dave has been cracking on with the drainage at the base of the pond here. And I've just been putting in a couple of tons of sub-base MOT, which is gonna get compacted down, whacked down to form this nice firm foundation for the base of this pond. Now the drainage for this pond is very simple. Small trench dug at the base of the pond underneath what will be the pond liner and the fleece. A layer of round gravel or small cobbles underneath. A piece of perforated land drainage pipe. This is just under four inch in diameter. One end of it has been blanked off entirely to make sure that roots from the nearby trees and plants can't impregnate this, block it up and get in the way. And the other end of this is gonna disappear off down through the trench, terminating at a position slightly lower than the base of this pond. This is then covered in some more gravel. It's wrapped up in some geotextile fabric, which has been perforated, needle perforated, so it's nice and porous, and that will allow the water to percolate through. And this is here just as a safeguard, as I say, that during the winter months, as it's the lowest spot of the garden, should any water build up beneath the pond liner to prevent it from lifting, it's got an escape route to get out. So Dave and I are feeling both a little bit jaded from yesterday. It was a hard day, a lot of grafting in that heat, and today there's no rest. It's going to be even hotter, 30, 31 degrees for the next couple of days. And we've got a few more tons of aggregates to start bringing down from the top of the garden. But we're making good progress. I'm pleased with how it's going so far. Pond starting to clear from its recent dose of blanket answer. And hopefully over the next few days to a week or so, the water will really start to polish up and and get a little bit clearer. Right, little top tip if we're trying to empty out some bulk bags of aggregates. Some are easier than others to remove. Sand's quite nice and easy to dig out. Gravel's not too bad. But when you're trying to shovel out some of this MOT sub base, which is not very easy to get your spade or shovel into, it could be a pain getting it out of these bags, especially when they're up high in the back of a van. So, if you don't need to salvage the bag, and if you're going to empty it all out in one go and ferry it somewhere, rather than just decant to bits and pieces, the simplest thing to do is just to split the bag. Here, on this nice hard standing on the driveway, it's really simple for me to just split the bag, let it fall out onto the tarp, and we can just shovel it up off the floor. It makes it an awful lot easier. There we go. 
trying to get out of the bag like that. Makes it a much easier job. Oh, feeling hot, hot, hot today. So all the MOT down, sub base ready to get compacted. The central drainage area has been filled with some shingle just to top it off so it's not going to mix with the sub base and we can get this whacker down and then if this is a little bit low we'll just put a bit more gravel to level it all off so it makes it a little bit more seamless when we fleece and line later on but for the time being we've got to do a lot of tamping but we're not going to use this today yeah I'll let Dave have some fun. Well, whilst that's going on, I've been ferrying a load of blocks down. We've got half a pallet of concrete blocks. Just gathering up a lot of the building materials so that hopefully the next day or two I'll be in a position to start building. Neatly stacked, I thought that was what I was aiming for. Another one. I've just rescued this little chap from an untimely death by getting squished by the whacker plate. He was down in the bottom of the pond. Isn't he beautiful? But he's a feisty little thing. Look at him. You can see why people mistake them for, for little adders. If you're not sure what you're looking at, especially when they, when they try and strike like that, he's not going to do anything at that sort of size. I'm hoping he's going to be far too small to be able to scent on me as well. Come on, little chip. Absolutely beautiful. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Look at him. Anybody who doesn't like snakes, if you could feel something like this, it's silky smooth, beautiful. We'll go and release you back in the compost bin. Off you go, little one. And no smell on my hands, that's the best bit. the whackering done much 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 quicker and more efficient than using a hand tamp something of this sort of scale you know you definitely want to invest or hire some proper equipment so it's not dead level by any means but it's a nice solid firm foundation and then once that first course of block has gone in I'll get them leveled out so I can create a level interior wall it'll all make sense as I'm going along this central trench here is a little bit low, so we're just going to fill it up with a bit more 10 mil gravel and just grade that over so that both sides of this are relatively level. And then it's off to go and get a load more building material, some sand this time. Good morning, another day on the job, another hot, beautiful, sunny start to the day. So we brought down all the aggregates yesterday afternoon. It was a long afternoon of ferrying down lots of sand and other bits and pieces, but that's all here now. So essentially all the building materials are available for us to start building. And the first thing I want to do today is to mark out on the floor an impression of what will be the center of the pond, the deeper section of the pond. And this is the bit that's gonna be constructed out of block work. And before I do that, I wanna just gauge and get an idea of approximate difference in levels working around. As I said yesterday, it's not dead level, and that's fine. I shall make sure that it's level when I put the first course of blocks in. But if I can get an idea before I start laying where the high areas are, where the low areas are, it will stand me in good stead for actual working. Have I just found a fossil? 
Oh, interesting. I did. I just found a fossil. <laughs> I'll have a look at that later. Right. Using a simple, simple laser on a tripod with a receiver. When I get a fixed tone, like that, that's marked up on the laser. And then I can make a, a line on my level here as a visual guide. And then based on that line, I can compare it to over here. And we've got more of a difference than I'd like. So I've been working out a shape for what will be the deeper section of the pool. Um, I've marked up a couple of sort of slightly faded outlines and then I keep leaping out of the pond so I get an elevated view so I can have a look down and see how that integrates and ties in with the rest of the rest of the excavation and the ground here. Essentially a kidney shape which is a real classic pond shape introducing some nice curves into this area making it less circular or kind of well bomb cratery which is uh, what the shape of this one was originally. Um, and having that kidney shape means that there's going to be an area where the, the ground or the surrounding edging uh, of the terrestrial stuff outside of the pond is going to be brought in a little bit closer into the pond. I'm happy with the shape, so I'm just going to go over it again with a slightly darker line. There we go makes that a little bit more visible. So all of this inner section is going to be the deepest part of the pond and we'll start to chop some blocks and get them laid following this shape. So once we end up with two or three courses high the block that will form the inner edge of the walling. Now obviously if, if we were doing this from scratch if none of this excavation was already here we wouldn't have to go to any of this effort. But because we're trying to reduce and make a smaller pond in a much, much larger hole, we're having to form the edges ourselves rather than do it by digging the pond out. Now this pond is all about the shallows. Um, being a natural sort of wildlife pond, uh, it's the shallows where all the marginals and the peripheral plants are going to go, and it's the marginals where a lot of the wildlife are going to um, inhabit. Amphibians particularly like to spawn in the shallow water. Um, and I also want to make sure that we are reducing the overall footprint of this entire excavation slightly so that once this is done we can reclaim a little bit more land so that there's more space for walking, for maintenance around the pond and for planting, exterior planting outside of the pond. So once the walling is built up from here this is where the shallows are going to span and I want to make sure we're going to have a good two or three feet at least minimum of shallows before we then get to the edge of the pond and the final extremities. And places like this here with this kidney, we've got the option of having a much, much broader marginal area, or perhaps in the future, I keep thinking about maybe a deck or a little pontoon or something in this position would be quite nice. But that gives us plenty, plenty of space to do our marginal zone and then start to reclaim a little bit of ground around it as well. It's going to be a lot of filling. All of the stone and the rubble that's left over once that's, that block work has been built is going to get lost behind here. And there's going to be quite a few tonnes of topsoil that will be brought in to grade in, um, to landscape around here and to blend all of this in as well. So there's going to be a lot of earth shifting. But I'm happy with that. So we can start cutting some blocks and getting them laid. last couple of blocks and then we would have laid the first foundation ring of the block work. Now this has taken much much longer than I would have hoped to have got this first course down but with the undulating levels and the different thicknesses of um, mortar underneath this to make sure we've got a level surface it's taken a lot of a lot of infill and a couple of courses of blocks in places but once we've got to this level now the next couple of courses should whiz through much quicker. Last piece. Well, 
What do you reckon, cameraman? Yeah, it does. Classic kidney shape. Always works well for a pond. Now remember this inner section, this is just the dimensions of what will be the deeper water. The pond is going to extend beyond this. So it is a, it is a big pond. Hit record. You've got to say rolling when you've hit record. Rolling. Sorry? Rolling. Rolling. Thank you. Right, job done. It's getting late in the afternoon. It's very hot. I don't want to start the next course now, so I think we'll go and pick up a few more blocks ready for tomorrow. And then we'll have a good day tomorrow and get the next couple of courses in, fingers crossed. A good day though. Thank you for all your grafting, Dave. So making good progress this morning on the second course of block work. Uh, and this mortar mix is a little bit different to the base mix. Um, for block work, I mean, most people would just generally use a building mix of um, building sand, soft sand and cement, and a little bit of plasticizer. I always like to put a little bit of grit into my mix. So we are doing three parts soft sand or builder sand to one part sharp sand to one part cement. And they're making a nice kind of blamongy uh, wet mix, which makes it a lot easier to lay the blocks. So these are going in an awful lot quicker than that base layer. And we should have both courses done by the end of today quite comfortably. Then we can start backfilling. Still using half blocks, making it easier for me to form those curves around the pond. Now I am by no means a professional block layer or brick layer. There's a definite art to laying bricks especially. And a lot of people, a lot of tradesmen that are doing this daily for a living, they're gonna knock out a heck of a lot more blocks than I can. But this second course is much, much quicker to put down. Now if you're doing straight lines with blocks, you don't have to really worry about Checking the levels like this, you'd just be following a string once that bottom course has been set or once you've got both corners either side. But for me doing a curve and sort of making sure that I'm meeting up either side, I've got to be a bit more cautious because it's quite easy as you're working your way round to either start going a little bit up or a little bit down. Uh, and by the time you then get back to the beginning, your levels are way off. So I am being cautious and checking those levels as I go. Now, I just want to take this opportunity to thank all of my new subscribers and all of you who have been watching the videos. It wasn't that long ago that I was at about four and a half, five thousand subscribers. And I said that once I get to 10,000 subs, I wanted to start thinking about doing a, a q and A. If people wanted to start sort of messaging in with questions, anything, not even necessarily pond related, but any questions that you want to ask me and I would do a video answering all those questions. Well, I seem to be approaching the 10,000 sub mark much, much quicker than I was expecting. So I'm not very far away from that. So again, if you do have any questions you'd like to ask me, anything at all, uh, I really would like to, to do a little Q&A and at some stage perhaps even a short live video and start interacting with, with you guys a little bit more. Um, I'm starting to get quite familiar with a few names from you uh, who keep commenting and there's a couple of a couple of people in particular who have been very very generous with some of your tips really appreciate that thank you very much starting to look a little bit like a, a plunge pool rather than a pond so that's it two courses finished and that's up to what will now be the shallows on the marginal level i'm just going over all of the joints and all of the blocks with a brush whilst the mortar's still wet, just to get rid of any potential lumps and bumps, which when they dry are gonna become sort of protrusion, sharp bits and pieces that might poke through to the pond liner. So it's much easier to, to brush it down now whilst it's wet than try and scrape it off 
when it's dry. It's not a beauty contest. Obviously, this is all concealed underneath the pond liner, so it's just functional. So for the last few days we've been working on the pond, we've had to remove the sort of temporary holding, uh, water holding trap and bung off the, the four inch pipe, which is draining water away from the garden. So we're just about to reinstate this now so that we can get the sump pump back up, continue this flowing, and then it can pump away and do what it wants to its heart's content, whilst we can then continue um, with progress for the pond itself, and this isn't gonna be in the way anymore. Obviously, we only moved this originally just so we could start to form that, that firm base. So, with this drainage pipe having been blocked off, I'm about to pull the bung. It's either gonna be Niagara Falls, or oh, it's going to be a really disappointing squib. Let's see what happens. Oh, quite a lot. Hey, I'm getting a lot of it, but it's going to end up going down our drainage. There we go, that's the worst of it. That wasn't so disappointing after all, was it? Excellent. Well, that was a little bit of excitement. Simple things and simple minds, eh? Right, well, that's it for today. It's a Friday, it's four o'clock. I think we can pack up and go home and have a well-deserved beer after this very, very hot week but great progress, really starting to take shape now, starting to look like a pond, or even, dare I say it, I mean, this looks like the beginnings of a koi pond, even with a bottom drain potentially in position, but no, it's not gonna be for a koi, it's gonna be purely as a wildlife pond. So the next stage is gonna to be to have a little tidy up in here, but it's gonna be backfilling behind the walling. This is gonna dictate the deeper section of the pond, and then obviously I need to do the usual four to six inches of gravel and then four to six inches of water above the gravel and that will dictate then the final maximum depth. All of this behind here will get filled up with the remaining rubble that's here and rubbish and bits and pieces and then a load of soil brought in to get it built up to this shelf level and compacted down and then the pond liner can come in and we can start to actually build the pond itself and get involved in the, the process of the more interesting parts, making the pond look a little bit more natural. Yep, yeah, pleased with that. See you on Monday. Well, good morning. Another day on the job, having had the weekend off. Weather's turned a little bit now, but it's an awful lot cooler than it has been of last week. So it's going to be much more pleasant working conditions for some of the hard graft that we've still got to do to get rid of all the rubbish and the rubble and start to fill in around the pond. It's been about four days since that blanket answer had gone into the pond. The water's clearing up now beautifully. Nice to see all the fish again. Still bits of blanket weed around the edge of the pond and I suspect that probably one application of treatment is not going to get this cleared up entirely because the pond is still very new and the, the water itself is still pretty unsettled with all of the building materials that went into the construction of this pond. But it's looking a lot better than it was. Morning. Good morning. <laughs> so, next stage of the job. We're going to start filling up all around the edge of the block work, up to the height of the block work, so that we can start to create what will end up becoming the shallows and the marginal zones of the pond. It's a lot of filling to do. So we've got a lot of building material and rubble left over from the build of this pond. And when Mark had been digging up all the turf and the grass, he's been removing a lot of the stones as well. There's huge amounts of these kind of flint nodules and bits and pieces. So all of this is gonna get lost in there and act as a filler. I suspect it's not gonna be enough and we'll have to also incorporate a couple of tons or more of some uh, sort of grade B soil or some building rubble or something and then just finish it off with a layer of sand or some topsoil and get that compacted down. So for the next day or two, it's gonna be shifting all of this lot. It will be nice though to see those levels start to come up.
Trouble is, this is going to be horrible to dig up, isn't it? You're not going to be able to get the spade or the shovel in there. Most of it's going to be just picking up by hand, probably in buckets, and ferrying it across. Great fun. This is one of the worst jobs I've ever had to do. Flip it up, this is hard work. It's a toss up between picking them all up by hand or trying to scrape them out so you can shovel up some of the loose ones. We're making a great impact on filling around the pond, but it's hard work. Keep telling myself I'm getting too old for this. Then I look at Dave working hard down at the bottom there, and I stop complaining. Oh. You alright, Dave? Well, I better get used to this because I'll be doing it all day. I have to say, we're both absolutely naked. <laughs> so a little diversion. Although we're not yet full all around the edges, we are at a position where we can start to measure up and get an idea of pond liner and pond fleece size. So we're gonna do that now. Now I'm sure if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll be well aware of what's involved. But if you haven't, measuring up for a pond liner is a very simple process. Um, there's a couple of ways of doing it. One is there's a formula where if you measure the maximum length of the pond, the maximum width of the pond, and the maximum depth of the pond, and then using a, a formula and a couple of multiplications and sums, you'll be able to work out how much overlap and how much liner you need. Um, I prefer to do the, what I think is a more accurate method, and that's actually physically measuring the contours of the excavation. We've got a nice long tape measure, so it's easy enough for us to measure across one way of the pond, across the other way of the pond, and follow the contours as we go. Now obviously here, ground level is going to be, once the pond line is in place, up to the level of the block work, and then sloping back towards the ground. So what I won't be doing when I'm measuring is to come back down and follow the contours. We'll just have to pretend that that's ground level and pull the tape measure out taut. But that's good enough. Right, Dave. This is going to be the biggest span, the biggest marginal zone, and probably will be the widest point. And then the longest point obviously will yeah, be coming straight across, across here. There. So if you go from basically the overflow <coughs> trench, and we're going to end up with having water or pond liner, certainly up to about here. Multiple pairs of hands here, or a few bricks and stones to hold the the measure down always helps. Right, you leave that bit. Give it your hand inside. Got that? It's great. <coughs> it's gonna be a big liner. back to about there. So we've got a bit of extra space for planting, claiming a little bit of land. Obviously going to be a transition between aquatic soil, gravel, water, etc. So eight metres, I'm going to say. Oh, I know this is riveting stuff, but I'm going to turn the camera off. We'll have a measure up and then we'll measure again. Measure twice, cut once, always very important. And then I'll be able to work out pond fleece underlay um, requirements based on this pond liner afterwards. Right, so we've had a measure up twice. And that's going to be eight by eight and a half meters. So it's a pretty big liner. It's going to be quite hefty and quite heavy, especially with the one mil heavier duty rubber materials. Um, we'll either be going for a one mil firestone rubber or a one mil green seal rubber, whichever is going to be available uh, more quickly. They're both much of a muchness. Um, so pond fleece based on that, 8 by 8.5, so we're talking about 68 square metres of fleece. 
fleece will come in different width rolls. You'll get pre-cut sections, you might uh, find that you get fleece on a whole roll, but more frequently it's on a two metre wide roll. So that would be, if it was a two metre width roll, 34 linear metres of a two metre wide pond fleece would provide 68 square metres. Now obviously you cut it into strips, there's going to be slight overlaps, so I'm going to want to have more than the 68 square metres um, to be able to make sure that I get a, a nice layer of fleece all over. So I'll double up and I'll have twice that quantity. Um, there's a lot obviously stones and sharp bits and pieces which we're using to fill the voids. I will put some sand down and some softer soil down to cushion everything, um, but it will still be prudent to put a nice thick layer of pond fleece down to protect the pond liner as well. So we'll ring up the good people of Gordon Lowe Get some pond liner ordered and hopefully that'll be with us towards the end of this week. Dave just spotted another baby grass snake. This is the first time for you holding one, is it? Yep, it is. And what do you think of his feel? Well, you know, what does yeah, he feel like? Yeah, it's lovely and soft, as yeah. you said. Nothing to be scared of. No. Yeah, lovely. Apart from when they start smelling, I wouldn't be picking up an adult without gloves on. Good find. Right, let's go and put you back. So we're working hard this morning. Four tons of MOT down already. And filling up around the pond is coming on very well. It's a huge void to fill though. And once this has gone down, we're still going to have to put a load of soil around the edges here to get that bit filled up, levelled and landscaped. But it's nice to see now, you can actually start to visualise what eventually this will look like, with this being the deeper section of water. And now you can see the importance of having the block work acting as that structural wall, that retainer. But I have noticed somewhere in here, we've got an early visitor who needs rescuing. Where has he gone? There he is. Look at this. You're too early, mate. Come on. Honestly. I haven't built it yet. There we go. Let's go and introduce you in the existing pond. Go on then, off you go. That was a big jump. Give it another week or two, there'll be a bit of water in the pond and then the nature can return. And here he is, the star of the show, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, whilst he's been driving the van all morning. Yeah, he's getting those muscles out. My my block work. How much is left out there? Half a ton? Um, no, just under. Okay, so another bolt bag to finish up around the back there, do you think? Or possibly two? No, two. Okay, I'd better crack on and go and pick up some more then. Okay. 